الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد <coughs> so what is the purpose of life and how does that fit in with our study the relevance of studying this book is intertwined with the purpose of life because this book as with most of the books or many of the books of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala have to do with the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone they have to do with Islamic monotheism which is Tawheed and Tawheed as hopefully many of us know is comprised of three categories <coughs> Tawheed al-Uluhiyya, Tawheed al-Rububiyya, wa Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifat. Three categories. Tawheed al-Uluhiyya, which means the Tawheed of worship. So this has to do with meaning <coughs> that <coughs> the believer directs all forms of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's Tawheed. Al-Uluhiyya. Tawheed al rububiya has to do with the Lordship and the divinity of Allah Meaning that Allah is the Rabbil Alameen. He's the Lord of all things. He is Al-Khaliq. He's the creator of everything. He is Samir Dua. He, is, he hears all, you know, he hears uh, your prayers. He's al razzaq He is the provider and sustainer. Uh, and then Tawheed al Asma'i wa Sifat. Tawheed of, or the monotheism that relates to, as a category, relates to his divine names and attributes. And as we mentioned, some of them, uh, we said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al Khaliq. This is also. He is, this is a name and an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this has to do with his, his lordship, that he is the creator. <coughs> uh, and a razak, that means he provides rizq, he provides sustenance for his creation. So he, this is, his, his name is a razak. <coughs> and his, this is the sifa or the, char the, the characteristic or the attribute of providing sustenance, rizq. And so this goes, what is the purpose of life? فَقَدْ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنْسِ لِلْيَعْبُدُونَ Allah said it in the Almighty, said in the Quran, I have not created mankind and jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me meaning our what our divine purpose is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone that's why we're put here as uh, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when we realize this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us for worship so once we realize that Allah created us to worship Him and Him alone, it becomes an obligation upon us <coughs> to give that the utmost importance that which we were created for, which is ibadah, which is worship. And the great Imam, which is one of the uh, one of the what is known as uh, he was a former mufti of Najd, of Riyadh in this area, uh, Abatin, he said that we have to actualize this purpose meaning that we have to do this, we have to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is our purpose, to worship Him and Him alone through knowledge and action. This is why Ahl Sunnah says that the believer 
<coughs> has to gain knowledge, to gain knowledge of who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to, in order to properly worship Him. Whereas you find many other groups and many other sects <coughs> that they don't advise necessarily seeking knowledge, but instead they just want you to feel good and feel that you're coming closer to Allah. Maybe they emphasize certain aspects of worship, but they don't encourage seeking knowledge to increase your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you have to know how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, you have to know how to, you have to know about Tawheed and how to practice it. And, wa'amalin, you have to practice it. So you have to have knowledge and practice that Tawheed. Waqala ta'ala, Ya ayyuhal nas a'budu rabbukum alladhi khalaqukum walladhina min qablakum la'allakum tattakun. <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al Karim, Ya ayyuhal nas, O you mankind. So Allah is addressing all of mankind. Worship your Lord who created you and those before you in order that you will gain God fearfulness, taqwa. So you will gain taqwa by worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, by tawheed, by actualizing or practicing that purpose. Your divine purpose is what? is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tawheed. Meaning, Tawheed al-Ibadah. The Tawheed of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed <coughs> mankind, all of mankind. Ya yuan nas. Ya yuan nas a'buduru. Ya yuan nas a'buduru rabbukum. Oh, you... Mankind. He didn't say, Oh, you who believe, Ya you Aladina Amanu, La. He said, Those, he said, Oh, mankind. So it's this is the purpose of creation for us all. Worship your Lord who created you. Allah is al Khalik, as we said. He's the creator of the heavens and earth. He created everything. Worship your Lord who created you and created those who came before you in order that you gain taqwa. Taqwa refers to, as some of the Salaf used to say, some of the early uh, scholars from the first three generations, from the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, it's Ba'a Tabi'een, meaning those who followed them, that they, uh, some of them held that Taqwa refers to staying away from those uh, things Allah has prohibited and doing those things Allah has commanded. Also, another point with this ayah I want to mention: Ya yu an nas abudu, Ya yu an nas abudu Rabbukum. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "O oh, you mankind, worship your Lord." Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gave us a command, and. Take this as a principle, this is a principle, that whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you something in the Qur'an, that means it's an obligation upon you. Unless there's other evidence from the Sharia, from the Qur'an or from the Sunnah, to show that it is not an obligation anymore, that it is the next uh, level, uh, that it is uh, mustahab, meaning recommended, a recommended act, or then something else could be mubah, meaning that it has no, there's no reward in doing it, and there is no sin for leaving it. Or something could be makru, could be disliked, meaning there's no sin for doing it, but there's no reward for, for doing it as well, and leaving it, you'll get ajr, if it's makru, if it's disliked. And then haram, we know that haram means you get a sin for doing it, and you get reward for leaving it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us with something. And likewise, this, this principle goes with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well. That whenever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded us with something, that it means it is an obligation upon us. Unless there's evidence from the sharia to show us otherwise. Another example would be, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-kareem, in surah al-bayna, wa aqimu salah and establish the prayer. Allah has commanded us with what? With prayer, with salat. So that lets us know that salat is what? It's an obligation. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem wa'budu Allah wa la tushriku bihi shay'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and this is in a command wa'budu Allah worship Allah wa la tushriku bihi shay'an and do not associate partners with him. Worship Allah alone and do not associate partners with him. That means we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, we don't worship Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam. We worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, we don't worship uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We worship Allah alone, we don't worship Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam. We don't worship anyone or anything along with Allah azza wa jal. And we must avoid shirk in all of its manifestations because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forgive shirk if you die upon shirk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to speak kitab al-kareem, <clears throat> Allah says that he does not forgive in the law la yaghfiru an yushrik bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika liman yasha verily Allah does not forgive that you associate partners with him but he forgives other than that for whomsoever he pleases <clears throat> that lets us know that shirk if you die upon it, it is one of those things Allah does not forgive. And He forgives other than that. If you die upon shirk and kufr, and that gives us the importance of this treatise. This treatise, Nawak al Islam, the nullifiers of Islam, or the nullifiers of faith, is showing some of those sins, like shirk being the first one, and some various types of kufr that take you out of the fold of Islam. So not only are they uh, some, some uh, the, the first uh, naqid or the first nullifier of Islam that's mentioned in the text we're going to study is shirk is associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why? because shirk takes you out of the fold of Islam the major shirk and the minor shirk is a wasila it's a means to take you out of the fold of Islam that's why all shirk is dangerous and all shirk is from the major sins and then the rest of the nawaqid that are mentioned, those are actions or beliefs that have to do with disbelief, kufr. That's why it's not that we're just saying that they're, they're, they're major sins, <clears throat> and we know the aqidah or creed of Ahl Sunnah is that the major sins do not take you out of the fold of Islam. If someone is drinking alcohol and getting drunk every day, they're still, they can still be a Muslim. If someone is a homosexual, they can still be a Muslim. They're just doing a major sin. That's something sinful. They should be shameful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are uh, something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates. However, they still can be a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, the one who commits zina, the one who watches pornography, major sins, but, or the one who backbites, backbites and speaks ill about people without the right to do so, or things that they are displeased with, or carrying evil tales around the community. <clears throat> Those are all major sins. But they don't take you out of the fold of Islam as long as you do not s claim or believe that they are halal. As long as you do not believe with your heart that they are lawful for you. So they are major sins. But this other group of major sins we're talking about, which are major sins, but they also they constitute shirk polytheism and which is the opposite of Tawheed which we're studying Tawheed we talked about Tawheed the three categories the opposite of Tawheed or monotheism is polytheism is many belief in many gods or the belief in associating a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that's the opposite of Tawheed likewise we believe in having Iman Iman is 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 a part of uh, the Muslims belief that's what faith is we call it Iman the opposite of Iman is what? It's Kufr, it's disbelief. So the one who dies on Kufr, the one who dies on Shirk, they are not forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why it's important for us to study these things which take us out of the fold of Islam. And please be patient with, before we get into the treaties, I want to give us this important background uh, so it, it's going to require some patience, but bi'idhnillah we will learn some things from it. 
Uh, as we mentioned, Tawheed al-Ibad, Tawheed al-Uluhiyah we're talking about. We said this is the Tawheed of worship, the monotheism of worshiping, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And practicing Iman, practicing Iman. Uh, Iman to Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah is Al Amal bi Qalb wa Qul bi Lisan wa Amal bi Jawarih. Iman or faith in Islam. As a Sharia term, it refers to statements of the tongue. So when we say the Shahada, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, that is a statement of the tongue, a statement of iman. When you compliment somebody with something good and khair that is pleasing to Allah, this is a statement of iman. When you do something, do a deed. By the <clears throat> any any good deed, or you pray, you pray salat, or you make hajj, you make umrah, or you give physical sadaqah or charity. This is a part of iman. This is the doing something with the limbs. These are actions by the limbs, and then of course the asl of iman is in the heart. But you cannot have iman without all three components, all three categories. This is what differentiates ahl sunnah from some of the other groups. Is some of the groups say, Iman is only in my heart. As you see, many Muslims are infected by this. And I say infected because it's a creed which is alien to Islam. The, uh, the pious predecessors, the Salaf al Salih, they didn't hold this belief and they refuted and made takfir of some of those who were extreme uh, with this, who said, Iman is only in the heart. Meaning, I don't have to practice. It's sufficient. I say the Shahada. Khalas, I'm a mu'min. They believe that Iman. <clears throat> that the uh, deeds are taken out of Iman. This is what the Murjia believe, or Irja, the belief of Irja, which is also a very dangerous belief, and it's widespread that we have different levels that people are infected with in the Ummah, because how many sisters do we see? They don't wear hijab, and you say, sister, you should wear a hijab. Instead of being humble and saying, you're right, I, I'm in sin, may Allah forgive me, they say, brother, you don't know what's in my heart. Brother, I have Iman. You don't know what's in my heart. You're right. We don't know what's in your heart, but we see the outward is that you are outwardly displaying dis, uh, disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you're outwardly sinning without any shame. So this shows a weakness and a defectiveness in your iman. Accept that, but don't try to justify it and say you don't know what's in my heart and or iman is only in my heart. Yakfini, that's sufficient. No. This is against the aqidah of Ahl Sunnati wa Jama'ah. This is against what the Prophet والسلام, was upon. The Prophet والسلام, said, Man ra'a minkum munkara fal yagayru bi yad wa in lam yastatayf fa bi lisanihi wa in lam yastatayf fa bi qalbihi wa dhalika adu fal iman. Ru'ahu Muslim. The Prophet والسلام, said in Sahih Muslim that whoever sees a munkar from amongst you, then change it with his hands. What is that? That's the iman with the hand. And that's amr bi ma'ruf and na'il munkar. That is uh, enjoining the good and forbidding the evil. He's changing with his hands. Men ra'a minkum munkaran fa liyughayru bi yad fa in lam yastati' and if he's unable to do fa bi lisanihi with his tongue speak out against it. This is wrong, sister. Not in a brutal way. Sister, you should wear uh, uh, hijab. Brother, you should wear the beard because the Prophet ﷺ, you should grow your beard. The Prophet ﷺ commanded us to grow the beard. He didn't it didn't say it was mustahab, it was recommended, but he commanded. And he didn't even like to look at the men who had their faces shaved and so forth. So you are advising them with the tongue. And the tongue is what? It's a part of Iman. This hadith illustrates for us the levels, those levels of Iman and that the, all of those components are a part of Iman. They're a part of your faith. That uh, actions speaking on the tongue, your, uh, your uh, actions of the limbs, and the last one, فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَطْعِفَ بِي لِسَانِ فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَطْعِفَ بِي قَلْبِهِ وَذَلَكَ عَدَفَ الْإِمَانِ And if he is unable to, meaning unable to uh, change something sinful by speaking against it or advising someone or warning someone, 
then hate it in your heart. At least don't rejoice in it. Don't say, ah, he got the new Snoop album. You know, and you're rejoicing in your heart. Man, I want to hear those beats. Or, oh, man, you listening to that? Or, oh, you're, you're, oh, you got a nice girlfriend. And you're rejoicing in your heart. Yeah, his girl is fine. You know, whatever the case may be. The point being, Habati Fillah, Min Ra'a Minkum Munkarin, Faliyaghaidahu Biyid. That change it with the hand. If they're unable to, with the tongues. If they're unable to, with the heart. Disliking that behavior. And the Prophet said, and that is the weakest of faith. What does that mean? That means all of those things are a part of faith. And they all have faith. So that's the point. The Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah believes in those three components uh, that make up Iman. Something else I want to uh, mention, Kufr and Shirk, as we mentioned. One principle of Ahl Sunnah is that every act of shirk is a type of kufr, but not the opposite, meaning that every type of kufr is not shirk. Every type of shirk is kufr, but every type of kufr, disbelief, is not shirk. Okay? Let's give you an example. For example, someone who steps on the Quran, we all would agree that if they did this out of malice, this is a type, uh, you know, they not, not it was an accident or something like this, but they did it. This is a type of uh, an action of disbelief, or they threw the Quran down, or threw the Quran in the wastebasket, or whatever the case may be. Wa'iyadun billah min dalika. That this is an action of disbelief. So that means it's what disbelief is kufr, but that's not shirk. That's not associating a partner with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Okay. So we understand that. Uh, likewise, cursing the Prophet is a type of disbelief. But it does not denote shirk or polytheism. It is not polytheism. You're not worshipping along someone along with Allah or someone other than Allah. But this person has cursed the Prophet They've committed a major form of kufr, a form of disbelief. But this does not constitute shirk. So this is how we can understand that principle. And so distinguishing between Tawheed and Shirk, Kufr and Iman only comes with ilm, with knowledge. And this is why uh, the, uh, the Imam, he mentioned something very important with regards to knowledge. He said, Wallah subhanahu wa ta'ala farada ala uh, ibadihi ma'raf he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty has made it an obligation an obligation upon the servants to understand the meaning of La ilaha illallah that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and to know that there is no nothing worthy of worship except Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-kareem, fa'lam annuhu la ilaha illallah. And know. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us with knowledge, with ilm. Fa'lam. Know. Annuhu la ilaha illallah. That there, that there is no, nothing worthy of worship except Allah. Nothing worthy of worship except Allah. And Imam Bukhari had a chapter. You'll find it in Sahih, Mus uh, Sahih Bukhari. He says, Bab, <coughs> it's called Babun al-ilm qabla al wal amal. The chapter, knowledge, precedes actions and statements. That's so profound. That That is a lesson in and of itself. We're going to go a lot of information, I know, and we'll try to be as gentle as we can in presenting this information. But there's so much I want to say and that I want to get into, but I don't want to get us too far away from our subject matter. But I want to lay a strong foundation for us. And it'll make it easier when we study the book. Uh, so, Imam Bukhari, he has this chapter, the chapter, Knowledge Precedes 
actions and statements. That means knowledge precedes worship. You can't worship Allah. When you became a new Muslim, I remember when I became a new Muslim, they had to show me how to make wudu. Okay, I didn't have, still didn't have knowledge, but they were showing me. They showed me, said, you need to do this, wash your mouth out. And I was just like, okay, this is nice, I'll, I'll do this. And then they took me in the musalla, and I prayed. I didn't know what to say, but they just said, they gave me some statements, and they said in English, you could say this, you know, just say, uh, you know, alhamdulillah, subhanallah, you know, gave me some statements, and just follow the actions. So it was just taqlid, it was just blind following, you know, the people. Because you were, because I was new to Islam. That means knowledge precedes action. So I had to have some knowledge. They gave me that little bit of knowledge. They gave me something to say. Something to enable me to perform the Salat. I had to learn it until I can then learn how to pray on my own. <clears throat> and there's so much evidence that illustrates for us the importance of knowledge. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Man yirid Allah bi khairin yafqa fi din." Whatever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him understanding of the religion. Fiq fi din. So this is al al of the of the religion. Al manafia, beneficial knowledge. Beneficial knowledge, as most of the ulama uh, cite or say, that beneficial knowledge has to do with knowledge of the book and the sunnah, meaning knowledge of the Sharia how to practice your religion. This is beneficial knowledge. Doesn't mean it's not beneficial. We need doctors, we need lawyers, we need uh, engineers, we need uh, bookkeepers, we need all, all these things in, in the societies that we have. <coughs> but <coughs> what's considered real and nafia as a term, they, that refers to Islamic knowledge. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, <clears throat> also met, said, and this is the importance, and this shows us, this will help us to keep our intentions pure for this lesson, for these lessons and our journey, our various journeys in seeking knowledge, uh, that the Prophet ﷺ said, Men salaka tariqan yal talmisuhu bihi alman sahlallahu lahu tariqan al jannah Whoever traverses the path of knowledge, Allah will make easy for him the path to jannah. So that shows us just being on the path of seeking Islamic knowledge is the path to Jinnah. Allah will make easier for you to get to Jinnah if you are practicing and if you are gaining knowledge with ikhlas, with sincerity. Allah is going to make it easier for you to get to Jinnah. May Allah bless us with uh, Jinnah to Fardos. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. <clears throat> so, that this shows us the importance of knowledge and that knowledge precedes statements and actions. And a last point that I want to mention that the Sheikh mentioned here, he said, Taqlid fi tawheed. He mentioned this issue of Taqlid fi tawheed, which is serious, that we should not blind follow with regards to tawheed. So this is what the Prophet ﷺ said, "Talab al-ilm faridatun ala kulli Muslim wa Muslima." That seeking knowledge is an obligation upon every Muslim man and Muslim woman. This shows us that is uh, this this illustrates for us this hadith that the importance of knowledge for every one of us that not everyone has to be a serious student of knowledge that they have books and they're doing this and this. But everyone needs to know some basics of the religion. You need to know how to make tahara. You need to know how to make, uh, you know, ghusl if you need to make ghusl. You need to know how to pray. You need to know how to uh, uh, <clears throat> to pay zakat and make the hajj if, you, if it becomes an obligation upon you. You need to have this background knowledge. And just as important, if not more important than all of that, the first knowledge you need to acquire is knowledge of tawheed, of how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Islamic monotheism, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and how to worship Him properly. This